Hey folks, Viking here. Today I'm going to be starting a new series, and this is just going to be a, a one-off series, just happens occasionally. It's not going to interfere with any of my DayZ or Battlefield videos, it's just a fun little spin-off for me. This series is going to feature Empire Total War. Now, when I want to relax and get into some strategy, this is the game that I turn to. I've been playing this since like 2009, and I figured that I play this so often I really ought to share it with you guys. I think that the main reason that this game is so appealing to me is the main campaign map plays out a lot like the board game Risk, if you guys have ever played that before. There are territories that you capture, and you can then build cities and armies from those territories, and from there you can carve out a little empire for yourself or go ahead and go all out and take over the world and conquer all of it if you want to. The other neat part about Empire Total War is, when you actually meet other forces in battle you have the option to go into a real-time mode and control the real-time battle on your own and fight the enemy forces. For this first Empire Total War Let's Play, I'm going to be playing through the American Road to Independence campaign, so let's go ahead and dive right into that. The American campaign in this game is called the Road to Independence, and I've already completed the first few chapters which are fun, but uh, kind of short and uh, not super interesting. You actually fight through the original Jamestown uh, colony settlement, and then you fight the French and Indian War with the uh, British and the French fighting each other over the colonies. And where we're going to pick up is Episode 3, which is the American War for Independence, which starts in 1775. Britain won its war against the French, but it was we, the American people, who bore the cost. Our treatment at the hands of the British fueled fires of discontent that spread quickly through the colonies. In Boston, a group of men dressed as Indians boarded British ships and threw a cargo of tea into the harbor. Across America, talk of rebellion became commonplace, and despite several attempts to negotiate, our demands fell on deaf ears. It was this constant refusal to accept a new order in the colonies that would be the spark which lit the fuse of revolution. And so, I find myself here watching with pride as my fellow Americans tear down the tyranny of the British. We fight for freedom, a driving force stronger than the word of any general. We will need this strength in the battles to come. The British will not easily relinquish their control over our home. The fight will be hard, but the rewards are boundless. It's kind of funny just to dive in with the American army here, seeing that you spent the last campaign playing as the British. The war for independence has begun, and the fate of the city of Boston lies in the balance. Your men are entrenched on Bunker Hill, with the British preparing to mount a determined assault. You must hold the hill, and drive off the British at all costs. Your artillery are key to the outcome of the battle, and will likely come under severe pressure from the British Army. Use them wisely. Alright. Expect the British to mount a full frontal assault from the hill, but watch out for a flank attack from cavalry and light infantry. Use the terrain and buildings to your advantage, and Boston will surely be out. Alright, so this is going to be the Battle of Bunker Hill in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm going to set up my troop formations here and prepare for the attack. We've got British troops off here in the woods to our east. I'm going to go ahead and get some cavalry moving to flank them. Oh no, they're hitting our, our cannons over here. I'm 
move these men back, force the British to advance up the hill. Hit my own men with my artillery here. I don't have a good angle down the hill. Ugh. Switch my howitzers here to explosive shells. Try to drop some down on these guys. They're approaching up the hill. Ooh, my cannon's in rough shape here. Thankfully, my cavalry is mopping up back here. Broken the British line here. Move them back. Yep. Oh. Got British horses moving in back here. Cavalry. Excellent. Ah, we've caught their general out in the open, trying to flank with some cavalry behind us. But I had a unit of cavalry back here waiting. If we kill their general, it greatly harms the morale of their troops. And their general has just fallen. My howitzers are now dropping artillery on their howitzer battery over here on the hill. Things are starting to look up for the Battle of Bunker Hill. Which, in actual history, the Americans lost. We get to play a bit of revisionist history here. Alright. Now, your troop... Your units of troops actually have morale, and you see a flag flashing, that means their morale is starting to break. Seeing they're wavering. Because of casualties, I'm going to go ahead and charge them with my cavalry from their flank. Oh, he got owned. And that's going to quickly break their morale, and now they are routing. 
I have these guys hold fire. With that, we have won the Battle of Bunker Hill. Who had our most kills here? Provincial Cavalry, 41. Minutemen, 61. Minutemen, 141. Wow. While the war rages on, the members of the Continental Congress gather to sign our Declaration of Independence, the founding document of our great nation, a nation where the principles of freedom and equality are upheld by just and honorable men. This war will not be an easy one. Lives will be lost and families torn apart. But this is the price of independence. As I march, I think of my men and the sacrifice some are about to make. We are outnumbered and undersupplied, and yet we march. We march for our beliefs, for our families, for our freedom. Following your glorious victory at Bunker Hill, the British have evacuated Boston. The city is now under your control. Your army in Boston now contains troops that are battle-hardened and buoyed by their success. However, the rest of the British Army outnumbers us on both land and at sea, and is well supplied and disciplined. If the people of America are to be free, its fledgling army must find a way to overcome these odds. Perhaps Britain's oldest adversary, France, can be persuaded to balance the odds. So after revising history and winning the Battle of Bunker Hill, now in a position to begin the American War for Independence. And man, things do not look good. Well, I gotta say, in those movies, it is kind of funny to see like the rabid patriotism because this, this developer of this game is actually based out of the UK. This must be kind of awkward. But uh, overall, this game is just amazing. Uh, when you get to the main campaign, you can play as any one of, I think it's like 13 or 14 different nations, Spain, France, uh, Great Britain, and you actually control these nations at the height of their empires. And you control your tax policies, you control your government, you control trade agreements, you can negotiate with all of the nations of the world. And while this is a limited world map, uh, right now limited to just North America, eventually you will actually see the entire world uh, it's a very very deep game and a lot of fun if you guys see this on sale uh, on steam and you enjoy any kind of strategy game like civilization or uh, even command and conquer and stuff like that or if you just enjoy the board game risk and that kind of uh, nation building uh, global map kind of thing uh, this might be a game you should check out when it's on sale it, it, it really is a great game uh, 1775, the War for Independence has just begun. We have successfully defended Bunker Hill, and now we own the Confederation of New England Territory, which you can see right here. And we have a, a pretty decent starting army here. I'm going to go ahead and add them to our main army with George Washington. Alright. We've got a couple of trading ports. Uh, oh, wait, no, that's actually... Yeah, that's actually New York City, uh, and that belongs to Great Britain. That's actually part of this territory controlled by Albany, the capital right here, just across the border. Uh, I do have one trading port, to, <laughs> a fledgling navy of ooh, one fifth rate with 47 cannons and one small sloop with 18 cannons. Um, let's go ahead and get a naval port going. So we're going to have to uh, really build up our navy because the British obviously greatly outclass us with the navy. And th this is just... It's pitiful. This, these are probably privately owned ships as well, uh, being rented by the Continental Congress. Uh, citizens aren't super happy about the revolutions. A bit of clamor for reform. Uh, we'll go ahead and upgrade the governor's re residence to help maintain order in the capital. Get some farms going in the east there to prevent starvation. Now that we have our new nation established, we have to take care of some diplomacy stuff. Let's see. Uh, we are... 
obviously at war with Great Britain. I don't even see them on this list here. Uh, we're very friendly with Spain, so let's go ahead and open negotiations. We're going to request a trade agreement. Let's see if they just go for it. Okay, yep. Now we have a trade agreement with Spain. It's probably going to go down. Yeah, that's using our trade route out of, out of Boston. Out of uh, Providence, excuse me. And what are we trading with Spain here? Some furs and some other goods. That's going to give us 511 gold a, a turn, and that's going to be a significant increase to our monthly income, which is currently 2218. That is going to prevent us from trading with the United Provinces, mainly because uh, our port can't handle that much traffic right now. To upgrade that in the future. That's not a huge loss though, because the United Provinces right now uh, in in the Americas only only controls uh, Dutch Guana. I also have a number of uh, American uh, Native American nations out here in the West, and they may actually be allying with the British or fighting the British, depending on their history. Looks like we've got quite a long road ahead of us, though. Oh, technology. We also need to go ahead and begin researching our technologies here. We do have one school here in New Haven. And we'll get them working on empiricism. And that's going to help our technology rate go up faster. The purpose of technology is... We'll unlock and research uh, new buildings to build in our territories, as well as new features. Uh, this empiricism is going to add an increase to our technology research rate, as well as add one gold coin per town of value to uh, the towns and the territories. So, by adding our gentleman here to our schools, we can actually increase that rate. And look at here, we got Paul Revere. Let's get him to work. Watching our enemies. Aha. Uh -huh. Alright, and that took care of one entire turn worth of research there, so that's going to speed that up significantly. Uh, gentlemen can also duel at Oliver Fox up here. Uh, we need to keep an eye on that guy. So, we've got our diplomacy set up, our technology is going. Let's go ahead and get all of these buildings here in Boston going. Recruit some Minutemen Militia, some Dragoons, upgrade our road infrastructure, which will add more wealth to the, the, uh, the towns in the area, and it'll also help our armies travel more quickly through the roads on this territory, because yes. your movement speed is going to be limited by uh, moving across uh, open area with no roads. So you know what? Um, I really don't like this army sitting here in Maine, even though New York would be a great target to go ahead and grab for that trade port, I'm going to quick save and then your humble servant, and then march against this army here in Maine. Crush them! All right, a quick, quick save here, and I'm going to go ahead and auto roll this battle, just auto resolve. Proud and victorious. Um, it's not going to be too interesting of a battle. Make okay. ready. Now we've conquered that army, and the capital, Fallmouth, Maine, is now wide open. We're going to go ahead and... Oh, we're out of movement for this turn, so we're just out of reach. But we're still within range of Boston if any armies come from the west. Now, let's see. Philadelphia is held by a decent-sized group of militia, what British militia. Require? got this rake here, and what I'm going to do is attempt to sabotage no, a building. No. Now, rakes are um, scoundrels, basically. You can assassinate generals with them and do all kinds of terrible things, but it does hurt your country's reputation with other nations, and it, it may it may actually uh, hurt you in negotiations if you get caught trying to assassinate people or blow up buildings and, and that sort of thing. Um, oh, well. You can add to our... Um, Our prestige here. We have 10 points for enlightenment, 8 points for military. <laughs> Great Britain, yeah, they, they greatly outclass us. We don't even have a sliver of navy, and they've got 40. And that looks 30, enlightenment 30. So here we are, 
the fledgling United States about to face off against the British Empire. And we're going to try to play dirty here and sabotage their governor's mansion. Investigating oh man, we were caught, he escaped with his life, but that's going to hurt our reputation <laughs> for fighting dirty. I may try to assassinate their gentleman here and try to hurt their research capabilities. That's about all we can do here. Um, yep. So, we'll go ahead and let all the other countries take their turn. Oh, George Washington got a plus one morale point that will help Sir. in battle. Alright, let's see what Great Britain's got up their sleeve. Seeking cover. Alright, they're marching in from the west. Ooh. Uh, crap. Their gentleman wants to duel. And he is very good with pistols. My guy sucks. I guess I'll choose swords. This is gonna end badly for my guy. <laughs> I love these little videos, they're yeah. hilarious. And, ow, okay, that's not very hilarious. That's kind of brutal. Question is, did he survive the duel? Sail for the horizon. Okay, Taking so cover. he did survive the duel. Well, his honor was injured. Now, what's happened here is that one general that survived my attack here in Maine has tried to move back to support the capital, and my army has the option to ambush him. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. None shall defeat us. Yeah, that hurt him. <laughs> He's dead. What is France up to? Alright, so there's the dual report from the British turn there, where we lost, but we're allowed to live. We do have some troops that have been recruited here. And what we're going to do, yes. so we have a lot of armies moving into the west here, and they can start damaging our buildings if we're not careful. Let's go ahead and... At the ready. For battle. We will... Try to conquer this. Huzzah! Okay. Huzzah! Speed up our troops. There. there for war. All right, we've taken Falmouth, Maine. Falmouth, how do you say that? Repair the governor's mansion. I'm gonna march these armies back south. With George Washington, which is gonna leave some pretty angry folks up here. Now that there's no no army to maintain order. So the troops that I just recruited last turn from Boston, I'm gonna move them up. For and, and they're helping to add some order, but. I'm going to need to definitely recruit some more guys to send up there. Your humble servant. And ooh, okay. George Washington's army is really hurting here. I'm gonna have to station them By the left. and March. replenish their numbers, which is gonna cost me basically all of my income uh, plus a few Sir. that didn't get any reinforcements. That's gonna take one turn to replenish, and I'm essentially broke. So. Not much else I can do this turn. Our trade agreement is helping our relationship with Spain, which is definitely good, because they're they're one of the stronger empires here in the Americas uh, this time. They own basically all of Central America. New Granada. New... Oh gosh, how do you say that? Andalusia? Yeah. Uh, the British and the French are fighting over the Leeward Islands, the Windward Islands. And the pirates actually have control of 
Santo Domingo. Pirates are an interesting faction because they, they actually start out with one of the most powerful navies for some reason. I'm not sure why the developers decided that, but that made sense. They have like like empire level warships, like massive ships of the, of the line. Like look at this. They have a profiteer and a, a, a galleon, the Neptune. These things are monstrous. It's, it's, like, it's like 70 cannons and, and four decks. Not sure how the pirates have a navy like that, but... Take ready. One thing I am going to do before I end my turn here is I'm going to All hands on try to deck. raid All hands on deck. shipping here. It's not worth a lot, but it might help a little bit. I've got a lot of income next turn. Okay, I, I could try lowering tax levels to make Maine happy, but... Uh, they're just not happy about being taken over from the British right now. They're just gonna have to get over it. Uh, they may actually try to rebel against me. Uh, so for now, I'm gonna leave my tax levels at, at the medium level, just because I really need that income coming in. All right, so Boston is under construction. Got a few more troops coming in. Go ahead and end my turn and hope that the British just retreat to New York instead of trying to attack Boston, because I really need to replenish these troops. We got troops coming from the north. Speed up their movement here. Okay, they're gonna be traveling to the west to meet up with the rest of their guys, it looks like. Oh crap. And that, boys and girls, is why you don't mess with the British Navy. Can I retreat? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was nasty. Oh man, if they blockade my port, I'm gonna lose a lot of income. And I, my navy just cannot go up against them at all right now. They're gonna be fortifying New York. Oh, they burned down my port. Oh, and my school. Screw you guys. Ah. The pirates are attacking the British fleet off of the coast of Florida. Oh, and they won. Ah. That was a painful turn. So, by marching an army onto my trading port here, they've actually damaged it slightly, as you can see in the health bar. It'll cost me 150 and one turn to repair, but the main loss is uh, I got no income, as you can see, that last turn because of, of the port raid. Um, I think we have enough other income. It didn't orders really hurt me. Ships, orders received. Looks like all my buildings are done. Um, citizens are on strike in Maine. They're really not happy about the current situation. Let's see. Yeah, there's a lot of issues that you have to deal with with keeping your your uh, territories under control. And part of part of it is when you first take over a settlement, there's a lot of unrest, uh, resistance to foreign occupation. These guys have been under British rule for so long, they're not really on board with this war yet. I basically marched up there. Right after the war began, took them over, and they're kind of pissed about it. Let's see if we can get some more of these Dragoons, Cavalry, and the Minutemen up there to calm them and down. Forward. Okay. So, if it came down to it, I could exempt them from tax, which does um, actually make them a little bit happier. But I would lose a, a lot of income, so it's better to go ahead and move those armies up there. Thomas Jefferson just gained a trait. Hardest reputation. Negative one happiness for the lower classes, plus one to management for the Justice Administration. You can actually see all of your individual government ministers. Um, Samuel Adams is the current president, which adds plus four to diplomatic relations, and plus one country prestige per turn. Ben Franklin is the head of the army. It is pretty cool to see all these actual figures in their positions. James Madison, Naval Secretary, John Hancock, Treasury, Thomas Jefferson, Vice President. Well, you can see he's got that a um, couple of, of characteristics and traits that are hurting um, the happiness of the different settlements, but it balances out. Definitely keep recruiting here. Yeah, we'll upgrade our, our governor's palace, governor's residence, excuse me. So currently a magistrate here, in the capital of Maine. 
upgrade that to the governor's residence and it, it'll add some repression and help keep the populace under control so that I don't have to station quite so many troops up north. Naval options are very, very limited right now. I'm not even going to bother building a navy until I can get my docks upgraded, which is going to require uh, naval shore facilities. Yeah, that's going to be my first, first upgrade there as soon as I have the option to do so. Now, rim. let's kick these guys out of New Haven. Raise the flag! You know what? They just burned down a bunch of towns. We're gonna go in and we're gonna fight this one. Okay, so this is gonna be our first actual battle that we have complete control over. Um, here is the enemy's deployment zone. You don't get to see their location until the battle actually begins. This is gonna be a very flat and open battle, which is actually to my advantage because I do have some artillery. This is not going to be a very tough battle, so I'll go ahead and get my artillery set up. Yeah, with the artillery, these nice open fields are nice, although this, this howitzer does have the ability to fire over thanks to the, uh, the tilted barrel. It's like a cross in between a cannon and a mortar. Wow, that's really loud music. So with our cannon set up, we're going to go ahead and get our troops here. We're going to face the enemy, head on. Militia. Go ahead and get another unit of militia over here. Roger Goons here on the right side. We'll put our cavalry over here on the left. You want your cavalry on the flanks to counter their cavalry and to try to sneak in behind them wherever possible. Now, for my general, who in this case is George Washington, I really just don't want him to die. So I'm going to put him in a protected location uh, where artillery is going to have a hard time hitting him and where he has plenty of cavalry nearby to cover him. If your general dies, uh, it's a huge loss to your military uh, in the battle. Your troops might actually rout because of the loss. And in this case, I mean, come on, it's freaking George Washington. We don't want him to die. Let's go ahead and start the when battle. When attacking an enemy with superior missile troops, generally get into the melee combat. Now they are out of possible. range, but they are moving in. So we'll just hold our positions here. Their cavalry should be in range of my cannons now. Let's see how their shot is. Uh, no hit. Crap. Come on. Reload, reload, reload. Come on. Alright, we may just have to charge their cavalry. Yep. Alright, have our cannon hold fire here. Great shooting, guys. That was terrible. Okay, this is they're making a charge for my general here. I didn't see all of my cavalry in the woods. That's nasty. Now, their commanding general was in that regiment of cavalry, and he just died. So that's going to really hurt the morale of their troops. As you can see, that they're, they're currently walking. Concerned general recently died. So all of them are going to be kind of nervous now. And only eight of that regiment of horses, that regiment of cavalry, are escaping. We're going to go ahead and let them go and get our cavalry into positions. Let's get on the flank. We'll have one unit fall back just to cover General Washington. Our cavalry in here. I'm going to move these guys up some our militia. We're going to go ahead and let our cannon fire at will. Let's see if we hit anybody. Got one guy. Cannon is more of a more of a strategic weapon than a tactical weapon. You're not going to kill a lot of guys most of the time, but it's going to really hurt their morale and, and 
it will thin their numbers down as they approach your lines. And these are actual... Oh no, they, got, they have two units of militia, which are, which are untrained infantry. And they do have one actual regiment of British foot soldiers here. Uh, these guys are going to be the ones that you got to watch out for. They're going to have better morale, they're going to be better shots. There's my cannon finally hitting a few more. Alright. I need to get Washington back a bit here. They seem to be, really be wanting to go for him. I'm gonna shift my line to match theirs. That was a nice cannon shot right down their line. Okay, we really need to move this line completely over. I'm not sure why they're pushing so hard for my right flank here, but... Oh! Fortunately, my howitzer does not have the explosive shells yet, so... I'm just kind of dropping gigantic cannonballs onto them to annoy them. That's not going to be a great tactic. <laughs> First volley in there. Militia's already wavering. Second unit of militia doing. All right, so the battle in the woods here has started. British line troops are engaging my minute men. What are these guys doing? sure what this group of militia is doing over here. Okay, so they're down to 77 for this regiment. My militia men are holding up pretty well. Alright, well we're going to go ahead and try to end this here. They're already wavering. I'm going to send in the cavalry on their flank. Alright, and now their ranks are shattered. The Minutemen have ambushed the militia over here. Gotta love that 1775 tactical reload. Just give me a few minutes, guys. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and have my cannons stop firing, because I'm gonna injure my own horses here. I'm gonna move these minutemen up the flank. You guys move a little bit here. ready to charge their ranks. Ooh, the entire unit of militia over here that were hidden. Oh crap, don't let them get into formation, hit him, hit him, hit him. If they get into formation and start firing, my cavalry are screwed. I think it's too late though, yep, there it is. Close, but nice try, guys. Have them hold their fire. Charge him with the cavalry. <laughs> These poor guys stood no chance, but hey, you're gonna come into my territory, blow up my harbors and my schools, and actually continue this fight and. forward a bit and just run them down. Not gonna let any of these guys get away. Oh, 
Besides that, decisive victory. Citizens, march. Okay, now we can repair school and finish replenishing our army here. Ooh, George Washington gained a characteristic. Surgeon, plus 10% to recovery chance of battle casualties. Not sure exactly what that is, but sounds good to me. I really don't like this, even this, this weak navy sitting off the coast like this. If they hit my harbor, I'm going to be in trouble. Let's go ahead and send one unit of cavalry to prevent that. So they can't burn it again. Alright, so we defended New Haven. Avenged the burning of the port at Providence. Let's see what the British have up their sleeve next. And we got more troops marching down from the north. More naval movement south. Um, ooh. Just had a group of forces come, ac come across an ambush location here in Maine. Tribal cavalry. Ooh, and Hessian line infantry, 4th regiment of foot. Now, that's a very hardcore British unit there. I'm going to try to auto-resolve this, but I may need to fight this one out. We are triumphant. Okay, yeah, we fought. And we actually won that one. Um, those guys are hardcore. Don't want to see those on the battlefield. Thankfully, we outnumbered There is them. a port in this region that has not yet been developed. Select the type of port to construct here. A fishing port will help your population. Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and build a uh, trading port here in Maine.